Pope's just kind of got a life of its own, really. Um, uh, and it's Tina's. It's just a name for the colouring of bronze or colouring of wood, the colouring of, of anything really. It's really just an aging. So historically um, bronze bronzes were polychromed. So you know Egyptian, Greek bronzes, they were all painted. Um, and then when people started discovering them, obviously, you know, you're looking at thousand years, two thousand years old. The first ones they were pulling up were coming out of the sea and things like that. So you've got this relationship between the metal and the sodium chloride in the sea. So it's starting to, it's given already given it a patina, it's lost that historic painted quality. So when we talk about patina it's just, it's giving it a colour, it's, it's basically giving it a false, false age. So when, when these pieces were originally done, more would kind of colour them in slightly different ways or I'd have the foundry do different coloured versions of them. So this probably started quite light in colour and over the years it's got darker and darker and darker. What we found here was that it was, because it hadn't had a lot of work done on it for quite some time, the tops of the sculpture had become more exposed to the elements than the lower, the undercut parts of the sculpture. So they were oxidising at a different rate. What you then have is them stuck in the top areas or the flat exposed areas start to go green more so than the rest. So the idea was to kind of reintroduce a dark colour back into the top. It was where the patina had changed and gone green um, because of um, the natural change of the chemicals to do with the environment, to do with the atmosphere, etc. etc. That was that was scrubbed back with um, plastic based scotch bite pads, which um, you work the surface and you lift off all of that um, calcium. Uh, chloride calcium carbonate that's being built up on the surface and then that opens you up enough to then be able to apply the chemical on the top even just stripping back the old uh, taking the calcium carbonate calcium chlorides off will change the outlook of the sculpture so you're no longer having a green top you're having uh, a darker or a lighter colored top um, so it reads better and more intentionally to, to do the patina we were working with uh, potassium sulfate which is a liver of sulfur in, in a mix of water so um, it is a, basically a volcanic creation you know it just smells of sulfur so with this I, I did a rag application on this normally when I do a base I'll do it um, with an atomizer and, and spray it and spray it on but um, I didn't have one with me and with all the kids running about you kind of don't want to be spraying chemical around and it's kind of a bit more controllable if you do it um, by rag you can kind of see where you've been and you can wipe the excess off as you go if you, if you spray it you'll tend to get a lot more runoff trying to get you know as you're spraying things on it will just start to run off run there so if you come around here um, you can really see how applying the wax changes the tone of the chemical that's on the surface of the sculpture. So here we've got a dry evaporation so there's no wax left on the surface here. As soon as you start to apply the wax on there it's sucked into the patina, it's moisturising that surface but it's also protecting it. It gives you a much richer, deeper colour. You kind of try and work it into all the nooks and crannies. But what you'll find is these nooks and crannies will be your friend, but they'll also be your enemy as well. If you don't polish these out enough, all of these little pits will end up white. So the, the wax will congeal inside there um, and, and become little white dots. The way round that is that we tend to sometimes then mix in 
either a pigment into the wax or a coloured wax in with it, then if that evaporates it just leaves that pigment in those hollows. As you see, if you're kind of doing too much, it's already filling up those hollows. So you have to really make sure you work this wax into all the little hollows and not leave it there. Work it in, but also work it out. So you can see I'm now polishing off. So this is an area that's not polished. This is an area that's been polished so far. And you can see I'm actually using a really stiff bristle brush. Really, really stiff. And then I've got a softer one too. So really the stiff, stiff bristle brush gets right in and just scumbles over the top, but also gets into the hollows. And it just activates that that wax. We just polish it off again. You know, it's kind of quite a, it's quite a um, forgiving surface, so you can be quite, quite rough with it. You know, and as it is, these are only organic anyway, so. You can see the difference it makes. Bear in mind, this is still just application one. We'll do, we'll do a second, but as I said, I just wanted to see where we are. I, th I guess it was about 18 years ago when we got the call that, um, that a eucalyptus tree fell on it and uh, we needed, or it needed help, so it needed a bit of restoration. So we were asked to supply um, a mould, which um, we have some moulds, we have some plasters, but we didn't have the plaster for this or the mould for this. So we took uh, a mould of the section of our cast and sent that over to San Diego and there was a section refabricated here and the old damaged section was cut out and replaced with this new new section uh, and then that was colour matched that was patinated back into to blend the surface and, and you can see there's, there's a little bit of shrinkage and, and bits and pieces slightly different uh, and depth of form but apart from that it's you know, Unless, if you don't know it's there, you won't know it's there. Okay. Um, kind of started off when I was a little kid, really. Um, my 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 godfather was one of Moore's assistants, so I spent a lot of my childhood growing up in and around the studios at Moore's, uh, meeting Moore, knowing Moore, knowing all the guys all the assistants that worked in the studios and so I was surrounded by more sculpture, I was surrounded by my uncle's sculpture. We'd do a lot of um, gallery visits, museum visits, studio visits uh, and I kind of mixed with in a big circle of his artist friends from being a very young boy. Through, through college I worked a lot in the foundry so I had a lot of foundry experience so I was starting to work on um, the restoration projects, not necessarily all bronze, but in all manner of materials. Anything that nobody else wanted to pick up, I decided I'd pick up uh, and restore. And that kind of led me into it, really. Um, I did my first Henry Moore show in 90, 1992 in Paris. And they approached me after that to offer me a job looking after their collection. So really, I've gone full circle from having been involved in the studios when I was sort of one, two, three years old to you know the other side of 50 years in and around Moore's, Moore's work. So um, I've been 
as I say, working on more sculptures for over 30 years, with the lack of wax and with the oxidisation that was happening, you were starting to read the form in a slightly odd way. It wasn't reading as it should do. Now we've brought the whole thing back together uh, and it reads as one. The junction between the sculpture and the base is now solid. We've got rid of that really, really green base which kind of threw the whole sculpture upside down. So now it's grounded um, onto the pedestal and the sculpture is now grounded onto the base. So it reads as it should do. So it reads as one entire form or one form coming out of its base. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really happy. We're kind of some areas that were really dark, we've lightened. Some areas that were really light, we've darkened. So we've we've pushed and pulled the colour a little bit as well to kind of give it uh, the look that it should really have. Thank you.